Okay, hello, welcome back to Zoic TV. I'm Andrew Weir, and today I want to look at part three of the Blender 2.64 Beginners Tutorial Series, which is still looking at modeling at the moment. So, um, if you if you didn't catch the previous video, it's kind of just uh, looking at some really basic parts of modeling and getting familiar with it. And from this point, we can continue and we can create some more advanced shapes um, with some more advanced tools. So, uh, we're going to cover modeling, but then we're also going to look at a few modifiers, uh, which are also useful towards the modeling. So um, quite a lot to cover, so let's go into edit mode on this cube. Uh, what we're going to first want to know is, we've got all the basics to do with wireframe and so on, uh, how to select all, and different ways of selecting the cube and moving it around. But if we want to create a hand, we're eventually going to reach a barrier of, of the knowledge that I've already given. And we're going to learn a few new things. So, we, if we want to get started on this, we can use some things that we already know. For instance, just selecting the whole shape with A, scaling on the Z axis because a hand's obviously flatter than the cube. Uh, maybe even scaling this up a little bit just to uh, get, you know, we can always scale it down if it's too big later. And adding ring loops, which we're going to add about three so we can get four fingers from those faces. And then we're going to add one more here, which we're going to slide along a little bit to here. But if you didn't slide it along, and you've actually just pressed ring loop and clicked here, when it's a basic shape like this, you can always just move it on the x-axis anyway. And it's essentially doing the same thing as sliding it. Um, and another thing to mention about ring loops is Later on, when your shape gets more advanced, you'll probably end up with a shape. If I grab this on the x-axis, that's maybe not quite so even. So if I just set this up, which that isn't, I mean it's a little bit jagged and you want a straight line. And the best way to get around that is use the Alt-click in the middle there, which has selected the entire ring loop. And then scale on the x-axis. And if you scale it on the x-axis to the right point, you'll eventually just pull it straight. And we've got the straight line again, so that's a good thing to know. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to look at one new thing. So we're going to need to go into face select mode. And we're going to select one face at a time, and then we're going to press E. And that will extrude the face outside of your... Um, outside of your cube and it, it creates a few new faces to bring it together and that's what's called extruding and it's probably one of the most important things besides wireframe and ring loops and we're just going to bring that to the left a little bit because when we extrude this one out we obviously want them not to be right next to each other so we're going to bring this one out a little bit as well so that when we extrude this one they're not right next to each other bring it on the y-axis just a little bit and final one, we can bring it out, it doesn't matter if they're inside each other at the moment because we're just going to bring it along and there we go, we've got some basic fingers and when I said this was going to be incredibly basic I meant it because when you're actually creating a hand you're actually probably going to need uh, modeling references and you're going to need to create a lot slower than this uh, with loads more ring loops and so on and that's going to be the equivalent to the thumb. So, um, so that is our basic hand. And at the moment, we can obviously see that it's way too square. So uh, one of the ways around that, what we can do, is we can just add another ring loop in. Um, go to vertex mode. And maybe just grab that whole area there and pull it out on the, on the y-axis. Just a little bit. And this part here, we can grab that on the y axis. And if we grab all of them and grab them on the x axis, and then just grab this middle one here on the x axis, the hand shape is definitely a little bit, little bit more round now, uh, but again, it's still not really perfect. So what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to add a modifier uh, up here on the right. 
But if we go in edit mode to do this, then we can always just apply the modifiers and then go into edit mode afterwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at all these. We're, we're going to ignore half of them. Uh, we're just going to go straight down to subdivision surface. That's the one we want. Uh, and don't click apply. But what we can do with this is go back into edit mode. And we've still got our basic shape, which we just built. But on the inside of it, it our mesh is a lot smoother. And obviously if we'd created a more realistic hand, this end result would be a lot better. And that's how you kind of make, so you want to make the shape really basically, then add, add a subdivision surface, and, and then continue to model, model it from there, and you'll get a lot better of a result. Um, and we can see there's a few glitches about pulling it outside of the mesh, whatever, and you might not want it to go thin that early. In which case, what you can do is you can just add another ring loop in, pull that along, bring it towards the end, and you'll see that it's it's changed the, the type of finger that it's become. We can do this to all of them, so let's continue. Just bring a few up. And this is kind of going to be the end of the fingers, because then, if we go into face select mode, we can select all these end faces uh, one at a time. And just scale them down. And we've obviously got a lot better of a result there than we did before. And that could be acceptable in a basic animation or whatever. But at the moment, obviously, it's still not looking quite good. So uh, there's full tutorials on how to make hands. And that's just one quick way to do it. But what we can do with this now is we can actually change the amount we actually see. So if I take this up to 2, then that's what that is. If I take it up to 3, we also want to take the render up to 3 as well because uh, the render is actually different. If I render it now, we've still only got 2 there, but it, we're actually viewing 3. So make sure they're all the same, unless you, you want to see only 2, which is a good enough result to show you what you want. But when you're actually rendering, if we took this up to loads, uh, let's say 5, when we render it, it's going to take a little longer, but it's super smooth there, and we've got a basic result here. Um, and that's the basics of that. Um, and what we're going to do with the shape now is we're just going to take this back down to the original. And I'm going to add another modifier. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete all these here. So if I press Alt and click, it'll select the entire ring loop in faces. Same there. And uh, if I just select these four individually, then we've got the whole back of the hand there. We can delete the faces, giving us only half the hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a mirror modifier. And as we do this, we just go into modifiers. Um, we can apply it in edit mode, but I prefer to apply them in object mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply mirror. So where is it? There it is. And what we've got now, uh, obviously, it's got a big gap in between it, which we can sort out in a second. But we've mirrored half our hand, and we can only edit one side. So I want to move that like that, or can't do anything else over there. So, um, so that's, that's how that works. And what we want to do with this is we're going to need to firstly look at the modifier itself and um, if, if, if you've got some kind of crazy direction reflection you can change the axis by selecting these and at the moment mine was correct, it's done it on the x-axis, but uh, just test which one works for you, and it'll turn out a little bit better. Clipping and merge will keep uh, how they are. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the entire shape. And we're just going to bring them close together, which the point that it's actually reflecting from is that little orange dot which we've looked at before. And we can move them close together, uh, still having a gap. 
and then we can turn up the merge limit. So as we turn this up, it's slowly just going to bring itself together. And now it's completely merged, uh, giving this crazy shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to just turn on clipping now. And what that's going to do is when I now move this shape, it will never move away from the center. Whereas without clipping, it moves away from the center. And um, and that is the two basics. They are they're the two most important modifiers in modeling. And extruding is one of the most important things in modeling as well. And they are the three things that I really wanted to mention in this video. So uh, I probably will, will think of more to add to this series on, on the modeling part later on. But at the moment, that's all I want to cover. So uh, thanks for watching and bye for now.